my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today we are going to be tasting something I spotted at my local Chinese market and it's something I'm familiar with but I've never seen quite this version before. It is brown sugar grass jelly. This whole container is grass jelly, a black jelly. Now, I grew up eating this. My mom would buy it in a tin can. She would cut it up. We would eat it on particularly hot days. She would make a very sweet syrup with ice cubes and little banana extract. It was so good. We would just slurp it up with the syrup and it was delicious. And my mom would call this dessert black jello. And I've done a couple videos of it before. I'll put links down below. I believe I did a grass jelly drink and I did a giant grass jelly boba. So be sure to check those out if you miss them. But today I want to see if I can invert this and get this jello to hold the shape of this mold. And then I'm going to try it with this syrup in here. And this comes with a brown sugar syrup. Now grass jelly gets its flavor and its color from a plant. From what I read on Wikipedia, it has a couple of Latin names, including Menzona chinensis and Platostoma palustre. Grass jelly is consumed all over Asia and Southeast Asia. It's believed that the origins come from China, from the Hakka people. In Chinese medicine, grass jelly is believed to be a yin food or have cooling properties. It's often used as a way to cool down the body, as a treatment for heat stroke, and a perfect snack for summer time. I'm also curious to see what the brown sugar version tastes like. My mom made a banana extract flavored one. I think other popular flavors to have with this in terms of a syrup is condensed milk or some sort of milk parfait, but eaten all different kinds of ways. But we're just gonna eat it right out of the container. But first, I want to see if I can unmold this lovely black jelly. So here is what it looks like. And this was about $5. And it says to just cut it up and serve it with the provided syrup along with a lid full of water. So I guess this is also a measuring utensil as well. So here is the syrup, pretty concentrated. Kind of looks a little bit thinner than honey. And here is the sealed jelly. What I'm hoping to do is get this out in one piece, but we shall see. Now, as my memories of black jello, as we called it, or grass jelly, is that it has a kind of herbally flavor, but not very strong. Mostly what we enjoyed, my family, well, I should, shouldn't speak for myself, but what I enjoyed was the sweet banana flavored syrup. And I know most of you know that I don't like banana, but not in this case. Oh, it's soft. Okay, so it had some, okay, good. I thought the whole thing was soft, but I think it was just some of the liquid in there. So it looks like it's kind of swiveling in there. Can you see that? That's great. So I think I might be able to do this in one piece. I'm straining off the excess. And there is the jelly. You see that? I was going to run my knife around the perimeter, but I don't think I need to do that. I think it will just release on its own. Let's try. Alrighty, here we go. Gotta do this with conviction. One, two, three. Ooh, got some jelly everywhere. So often what happens is that a vacuum is created, so we just need to get some air into the mold. Or we can poke a tiny hole. I don't wanna mar the surface. Just to see if we can create a little hole to release the suction. So just a little hole. Tighter. Oh, did you see that? <sighs> I'm glad I had my camera rolling. It went, <sighs> yeah, that was beautiful. So if you've ever had Japanese pudding before, pudding, it comes in a plastic container. It basically is like a flan. So there's like a caramel layer and then there's a beautiful vanilla eggy custard below. It has a little flick of plastic protruding out to so invert it and you break the little stalk of plastic and it creates a hole and this exact thing happens. Warning, let's, let's, let's see how it looks. Okay, here we go. It's kind of floating. <gasps> okay, oh, it's making such a great sound. Oh, yes. <laughs> I got it. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Look, it's just 
roll it around all glistening and shiny it's so beautiful okay i'm going to soak up this excess syrup not syrup but water take a picture of this and then we're going to give this a taste <laughs> It's beautiful. All right, my lovelies, look at my beautiful grass jelly. Isn't it marvelous? I'm so happy that it just turned out so beautifully. It came out so simply. Look how beautiful this is. It's so jiggly and wiggly. It's so awesome. It looks like one of those, what do they call them? Sea hairs? Have you ever watched those tidal pool videos? And they have this beautiful inky black soft shiny creature that's what this is reminding me of okay so now we are going to top this with the syrup provided i'm going to mix it into a lid full of water as instructed and we're going to use that to sweeten the grass jelly wow that's pretty thick but not so thick as honey let's taste it Mmm, mmm, mmm. It says brown sugar, but to me, it tastes like artificial maple syrup. Okay, so just gently stirring this. This is cold water because this is a cold dish. And so it's taking a little bit more time for the syrup to dissolve. Okay, I hate to mar its perfection, but we're gonna cut it. Ready? Oh, it's Oh, let's do this. Oh, can you see that? Look at this. Oh, yeah. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> it's so fun to play with. Give you an idea of the consistency. It's got some bounce to it but it's slippery too. Doing, 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 So my mom used to just cut it into cubes, bite-sized cubes. I'd say about one inch in by one inch, one inch by one inch. Oh, that's so nice. Did you see how it flopped? Oh yeah. Oh, that was cool. Look at that. Glossy. Look how beautiful that is. That is so beautiful. Look how inky it is. Ooh. Okay, now we're going to cut it into little cubes. It is such a pleasure to slice. Doesn't take any effort at all. Just effortless. And you're left with. Look at that. Perfect cube. It's not perfect cube actually, but just nice edges of jiggly jiggly. Look how cute. Alrighty, let's taste one without any syrup. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Mm. First, the texture is softer than regular gelatin jello. It doesn't have a bounce. It's more of like a gel. Very slippery, cool, and it has a very distinctive flavor. It has a slight bitterness to it. It tastes a little bit grassy, <laughs> hence the name grass jelly but mm, slightly minty too. Mm -hmm. And not any sweetness at all. Not really any savoriness either. It tastes a little bit like spearmint, tiny bit. Mm, like toasted spearmint, but not as mentholated or strong. But yeah, it has some of the kind of bitter notes of black tea along with some spearmint flavor and herbally 
slightly bitter. Having said that, it's not very heavily flavored whatsoever. So let's have it with a syrup. So we'll scoop some in a bowl. Oops. Cool. Ooh, that's a great sound. And then we'll pour some of the syrup that we mixed up into here. And there you have it. Grass jelly dessert. Beautiful. It's very elegant. Alrighty, let's have it with the syrup. Here we go. Mmm. Definitely better. The level of sweetness of the syrup. Pretty sweet. Mmm. Trying to think of an equivalent. About the same level of sweetness of when you have a bowl of cereal cereal milk, like a really sugary one, about that level. Maybe a little sweeter. Mm-hmm. Mm. But in combination with that cool block of jelly, the sweet syrup definitely calms down the strong flavor of the grass jelly. When I say strong, I mean it in a relative sense. It's not that strong. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure quite how I feel about this brown sugary maple syrup flavor. I think it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very light and refreshing. Cooling dessert that's really delightful for a hot, hot day because of the texture and the temperature of the dessert itself. Alrighty, my lovelies, there you have it. Grass jelly. I would say definitely try it. If it's hot wherever you are, this would be nice and cooling. I think the grass jelly itself is a bit of an acquired taste. Definitely have it with the syrup. And yeah, give it a go. I almost forgot to mention the shirt that I'm wearing. This is the bloop shirt. Whenever I measure vanilla in particular, I always seem to say bloop and measure it in bloops because I can't be bothered to use a teaspoon. The real reason is I feel like I would waste some of the vanilla by using a teaspoon. You know what I mean? Like you leave some residual vanilla in there when you can just go bloop and it's perfect, right? So get yourself or someone you love a bloop shirt. The inspiration for the design is based on a bag that I carried in middle school. Alrighty, my lovelies, thanks as always for your support. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>visit a sea hare and say hello sea hare how are you actually I wouldn't pick it up because I wouldn't want to like give it my skin juices you know but if I ever saw one I definitely would say hello hello sea hare my virtual sea hare my sea hare surrogate I don't even know if that's what they're called